intern, hello! I'm so glad you've gotten here. As you can see, Bilberry is not doing very well. The other zookeepers and I are kind of clustered around Bilberry. Oh, well, there's some small poop over here too. Clustered around Bilberry, hopefully. <gasps> Bilberry, are you learning how to drink? Oh, yay! And Panther Chameleon 4 is now pregnant again. That's wonderful news. We should have more Panther babies. Panther Chameleon babies, that is. Bilberry, did you just figure out how to drink for yourself? Since your mother is taking... Oh, there's poop right there. We'll clean that up in just a second. Since your mother is taking forever and a day to be able to feed you, huh? Let's see... Alright, Bilberry needs food, but Bilberry got itself some water. It's running around to get some exercise. <gasps> what a good baby! So apparently Bilberry's mom is not the most attentive of the red panda mothers. So I'm glad that Bilberry is learning how to tend to its own needs. And we will be right here a step behind to make sure that it's well taken care of too. Don't you worry, intern. We'll make sure that Bilberry's alright. Good job, zookeeper. You scooped that poop before I could even get back over here. Oh my gosh, and I hear snoozy doos in. Red pandas. Alright. Is somebody taking care of this baby yet? Ah, poor baby. It's the, the harshness of wildlife. Oh, yay! Bilberry just grew up into an adult. Thank goodness. Now Bilberry will be able to take care of himself. And look, she's wearing our shirt. I love it when they wear our shirts. <gasps> He's wearing our shirt, too! Wow! Well, what a wonderful day to start the day, in turn. Also, let's go ahead and take care of these floating vines. Ah, dang it! Why? We were so close. We had five stars for so long. Why? Oh, oh, you know what, intern? That reminds me. I think we actually need to work more on getting some of the additional uh, goals and challenges and basically the, uh, the things that our boss tells us to do done. I don't think we have enough of them done and we need more species and more educational habitats. Guests are educated by seeing animals in their native habitats. Hiring educators helps, as does grouping compatible biomes. Very cool, very cool. And we need more entertaining animals, and guest happiness needs to be bumped up just a little bit. So we'll work on some of those things. But I'm hoping at some point today, we will be able to actually mark off the area where we are going to put in our Asian forest elephants. I'm so excited about this. I think we might actually leave this entire area to some of the smaller exhibits and then we're gonna have well no 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 you know what I think the idea we had about the sky tram down here actually would work out wonderfully so we'll have somebody come up here we'll kind of put like a, see there's a little viewing spot so people can look at the snow leopards or excuse me the clouded leopard or clouded leopard yeah clouded leopard yes yes I was mixing up my big cats in my head for just a second in turn sorry about that but we have our little path over here, and we've got our awesome little viewing area, so you can see the cloud leopard. <gasps> Look, there's one of the babies! Yay, we're more famous again! Yay, baby! Looks very odd right now, but it'll look much better once it grows up. Don't you worry. Oh, don't climb in the poop. Don't climb in the poop. I've got it. I've got it. There you go, little one. There you go. Oh, thank you. I think we're adding to the poop here. Nope. Okay, we're good. All right, we're good. All right, so I think having uh, the Sky Tram start about here and then go through the area where we will have the elephants would be really awesome. So let's go ahead and figure out where we're going to put down the rock. Mm -hmm. Red Panda, don't you worry about anything. We'll get to you in just a minute. Yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and make the sky tram on this end. And we'll close this whole thing off right here. So this whole area is closed off. And we'll come along back here. Ignoring the absolutely terrifying cliffs. We're just gonna like close this whole area off. Actually, well, I guess this area is closed off technically All right. Well, I'm gonna officially close it off. Oh, somebody just died of old age the first of somebody hang on Girl two All right, who just died of old age? Oh, Panther Chameleon! Oh, Panther Chameleon 4 just died of old age. After it just laid an egg, or was about to lay an egg. Oh, I hope it didn't get egg bound. That would be so sad. That would be so sad. But all right, so let's come over here and we're just gonna go ahead, build up this fence taller so people can view them just from this side. Our adorable little greater mouse deer. Hopefully there's a lesser mouse deer somewhere. And we are literally going to give these guys as much of this side of the zoo as we can manage. So let's do this, and then we'll make another pathway down here. Okay. And is it three wide? One, two, three wide. There we go. 
So we're going to come over here and we'll give give the guests kind of like this little spot. We'll turn this into a good viewing zone. And then we're still going. We're still going. We are going to give them like a humongous, humongous territory because that's what elephants deserve is a gigantic territory. This is going to be ridiculous in size and proportion once we are all done. That is how ridiculous it is. Ba boom! The majority of our zoo goes to the Asian forest elephant. And we will be adding in several other species as well, so it can be kind of a multi-species exhibit. We'll be putting in the sky tram going through it so people can enjoy a good view of the elephants from the sky tram. Hopefully they won't be alarmed. Elephants usually are pretty, pretty good, uh, and especially in captivity when you get them used to routine. We'll move the compost building over here. We should rename it, actually. Can I rename it? Let's see. There we go. All right, panda poo power. There we go. That's what we sell it as, in turn. The panda poop that we collect, we sell under the panda poo power brand, and it does very well. All right, let's clear all these trees back here. Eventually, we'll be moving our way all the way back to this end of the zoo. This place is huge, and we are filling it up to the brim, mostly with elephants, it seems. All right, we're going to come over here clear these out. I'm hoping this will bring more attention over to our tigers as well, though really, for quite a while over here, having this restaurant seems to attract quite a few people. And what does this man think? See, and he's coming over to the bathroom. Remember what I said a long time ago, intern? Sometimes it's just about dragging people with their own basic needs back to the zoo in order to get them really engaged with how the zoo over here is going. And actually, speaking of how the zoo is going, we put down a female and a male. Oh, hello, gorgeous. How are you? And this is our male. Has he, what does he think of the female yet? Have they made it? Let's see. Not yet. He's going to go drink some water. Okay, buddy. Um, let's name you uh, Denali. There we go. We'll name you Denali. And where is your potential mate? Here's Nala. All right. She's off to go poop. Maybe we need it here. Let's make them think that there's like an abundance, an absolute rich abundance of, of meat and creatures. So you should have you should have cubs now. And that works for many animals. In fact, many species of animals actually won't go into uh, cycles where they will breed unless they feel like there is a true abundance of food available for them to raise their young. Also, apparently they like durians. So let's put it down a durian and see what happens. Maybe stinky durians and interested cats equals something funny. So we'll see what happens. And I think we have the sand eel somewhere in here. Yeah, live food sand eel. One, two, three. There we go. That should keep our big cats entertained. I really hope that works. All right, Denali. He is peeing and playing with the bones. So hopefully something will happen over here. We'll see. But now in turn, we have the massive project of covering this whole area in rainforest. And we're not going to actually put too many trees in it. Uh, this, The elephants really do, the Asian forest elephants really do live in very thick tree areas. You would look at these forests and go, there's no way an elephant is hiding in here. And then you go in like 20 meters and suddenly you're looking at a herd of elephants walking through. And there are elephants in Asia. They're really, really, really reduced in numbers. Um, there's probably, I've read estimates anywhere from 20 to 25,000 left. And that seems like a lot unless you look at them Asia on a map and try to imagine how big that area is, especially with certain populations kind of isolated in different groups. Nepal, I believe, from what I've read, and I need to double check this, but Nepal is currently known through the Worldwide Animal Foundation, uh, the WWF, I should say, <laughs> which sounds awesome, but they're known for having zero poaching of their elephants, and they've done so many things to make that happen. They've educated their public, they have provided um, alternative in sources of income, they've provided stewardship of the, the native people over their land, so they don't feel like they have to obey these laws because they're so arbitrary and don't relate to them. It's been a very complex success story for Nepal, but it would be wonderful if we could see the other forest elephants and other other parts of Asia thrive as well because they are they are just as intelligent the same intelligent complex beautiful creatures in Asia that, the, that we know about the Asian elephants in Africa 
And the Asian elephants, if you think about it, you will know that you've seen them before, you've heard of them before, because they're so often used to help move lumber, or you ride on them and go through the jungle. Uh, if you know Jungle Book, then you know that those are referring to Asian elephants. They are not referring to uh, savanna elephants. And there's the sun bear! We're not putting a wild sun bear loose with everybody else, but look how huge this exhibit is compared to the sun bear. We're going to have a ginormous exhibit. This is going to be awesome. We will build another sun bear exhibit elsewhere. Here's the Siamese tiger fish. We might put uh, a nice river or creek. There's plenty of room for waterfalls, rivers, creeks, all of it right over here. We might turn this area into a waterfall even. So let's see. What can we do? And where, oh, where are you? There's the colored peccary. We might try, um... I might try mixing them in here. This is a South American animal though, so it might be a little bit weird. Here's the Central American squirrel monkey. The golden bamboo lemur. Now we might try letting the golden bamboo lemur loose in here. This might be a huge multi-species exhibit. We might even move certain species out of this exhibit, and like when they breed and have like a couple sample exhibits where you can see them closer up elsewhere. So where the heck are my elephants? I know they are here somewhere. All right, let's try this. All. There we go. All right, and turn. Let's flip through the catalog. Sometimes these pages, you know, you think there'd be more modern ways to update these, but just not yet, it seems. Just not yet. There we go. Here is the Asian elephant. There we go. Oh, yeah. We're going to have plenty of room for a beautiful herd of Asian elephants to roam. The herds of Asian elephants are often led by a matriarch, so an elder female, just like the, the herds of elephants in the savanna area tend to be as well, in Africa. And they usually are about... As the usual estimates I've read say anywhere from seven to eight, but I would be very interested to know if that's always been the historical amount of the herd size for the Asian elephant because their numbers have been so decimated and their herd is such a unique, intense social relationship. Maybe their herd sizes have shrunk just to try to keep a, the closer family unit. Maybe there used to be more. It would be really interesting to see if that's the case. Oh, look, they have little enrichment logs. We're definitely going to get that. And the peanut feeder. I totally forgot about the peanut feeder. I love it. All right, and we're going to get some elephant houses researched so that they feel like they've got a nice, safe place to go if they want to go inside the elephant house. Let's make sure we have all of their food. The browser holder with branches and the browser holder with grass and hay. All of those, let's just drop research. We want to make sure we are prepared for these beautiful ladies. And oh, giant panda five has died of old age. That's so sad. All right, and the Asian elephant. Hmm. We are gonna go, how am I gonna manage this? Let me think. Cause we've got our temperate grasslands and we also need to mix in, uh, because they're not temperate grasslands. They are they are tropical rainforest creatures. So let's see. All right. <laughs> it lacks greenery. All right, but let's just put this kind of mulch down first in turn, and then we'll go back over it and just do little patches of greenery here and there so that I don't I don't cry myself to sleep because it's just so blah. And we can do more than blah. We can add on and put in additions and extra bits that nature never could because of our unique position. There we go, good. The browser holder research is done. The hay research is done. Elevated food research is done. We're gonna have to put in a lot of feeding stations for the elephants. Lily is giving birth, yay! Lots and lots and lots of orangutans. As usual, the orangutans breed wonderfully and they live a very long time. All right, oh my gosh, this place is gonna be huge! We're gonna have to make so many stations. We're just gonna have to stop and be like, okay, this is a station. Here's places for them to sleep. Here's places for them to eat. Here's a station. And we'll just have to put the trees in between the stations. So we might try it that way in turn. Phew, there we go. All right, so let's get a little bit of greenery mixed in here. What am I gonna use for the greenery though? No, not the tropical savanna. Hmm. Scrublings? No! Uh, Shimfit Rainforest? Maybe! I kind of like that one. Open Woodland. I kind of really like the Open Woodland for the idea that I'm getting for what we want this to look like. So let's do the Montane rain Rainforest. We'll go with Montane Rainforest. Yay! And the horses are now pregnant again, as usual. Alright, let's try this. Smaller brush intern? 
Hmm. You know what? I probably should have done it the opposite way. But let's do this. Do, 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 do. Trying. Oh, it looks like we're drawing creepy faces. We don't want to do that in turn. We just want to put the sod down. Ah, uh, you know what? I should have just like put this down first. All right, fine. I'm sorry. I know I tried in turn. I tried to follow the rules. I just couldn't do it. I needed greenery. I need to be able to see what our beautiful Asian elephants get to walk on. We'll add, we'll add the the mulch and the compost later. Oh, I'm trying. It's so hard. I just want it to be green everywhere. I know it's not in real life in turn. Not everywhere. But we are in our zoo now, and like I said, we have artistic license, and I'm taking it. All right, trying to leave these patches. There we go, leave big patches, leave big patches, leave big patches. Yeah, run away, Siri. Don't do it, Siri. All right, good job, Siri, okay. Oof. Well, that's better than nothing in turn. Better than nothing, in my opinion. All right, and like I said, this time around, I want to go ahead and make stations for the elephants and then put down the trees so that there's clear walking paths in between them. <gasps> Nala's pregnant, there we go. Dubai knew what he was doing. Or excuse me, Denali knew what he was doing. There you go. Nala, congratulations. Oh, and she's playing chase with him and everything. Oh, fun, fun, fun. All right, and let's go ahead and clear this out. And next thing, we're gonna do our best to set up these feeding stations. So let's put like a little elephant house here, and then maybe a couple rest spots. Well, I wanna try to keep the rest spots away from where the, um, the viewing areas will be. So let's also like, there's the big house. Here's some rest stations. And then we'll put some more rest stations down over here. All right, and more rest stations over here. Maybe we won't do the elephant house. I kind of want to. Jumbo size shelter. Maybe we'll put one back here as well. Just so, just in case they're more familiar with the elephant house, then they can feel a little bit more comfortable. All right, there we go. Hopefully that's enough. Let's get down and look at how big it is. It does not look big enough for an elephant, in my opinion. Like outdoors where they could sit under here seems bigger to me. <laughs> so we're just gonna have to see how it holds up, I guess. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we have food at each location. Browser holder with grass, and let's do the branches. I wanna make sure that we've got maybe like a trail of food. Maybe that's how we'll do it. We'll kinda just sprinkle food everywhere. There's gonna be little, little browser holders with food all over the place. Just to mimic, I mean, just like there's trees all over the place. You're gonna reach up and you're gonna eat from the trees, aren't ya? So it makes sense to have the browser holders with like hay so they have a nice varied diet and grass and branches just kind of going down the line. Oh, that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, now the tricky thing is going to be making sure they have enough water. And I think how we're going to do that, let's see, let's put these over here, is by lining the back wall with water troughs. So hopefully they will drink from the stable water troughs, because um, those seem to work best. And that provides a lot of nice, fresh water full of the good nutrients and vitamins that we put in for our wonderful elephants. Let's keep going. Good, and we're just gonna, just gonna line the back. Just line it with these, these troughs, because it just seems to work the best. There we go. All right. And yep, I wasn't joking in turn when I said we were just gonna line the back wall because we are. And this is actually going to provide, hopefully, quite a bit of water for pretty much any creature we put in here. There might be some creatures who can't figure out how to drink from these, so we might have to amend our attempt to provide regular, fresh, like, it's just like a pipe is running down along the back. You know what I mean, in turn? There's just a pipe running down along the back. It's gonna provide nice, fresh water, plenty of vitamins and nutrients added into it for everybody. And finally, let's see about putting down, let's have little play areas. So we'll put like the car tires and these over here. So lots of car tires. And then let's also make sure that we have painting easels. I think this would be absolutely amazing if they used the painting easels. I would just die of joy if they used the painting easels because that would be so cool to me. And this is just for fun. We won't ever force them to use them. I know that there's often a lot of debate and concern over people forcing animals to paint, 
uh, especially the elephants. But this is purely for their entertainment, just if they want to play with it, if they want to be trained to do something that is fun for them. And we'll put down a little peanut feeder, just to say like the guests can give them a healthy dose of a snack. If they get too many peanuts and they start to get too chunky, their diet is too thrown off, we will remove these ASAP. Because their health and well-being comes first, as always. All right, little peanut feeder, there we go. And then lots of little elephant, oh, these are not so little. <laughs> Those are some big elephant enrichment logs. All right, well, we'll just sprinkle a little few of these here, a few of these there. I'm so excited. Tomorrow we're going to have to plant an entire rainforest, which is going to be a big job. But it'll be worth it to be able to watch our elephants roam around. All right, almost there. A couple over here. They're going to be so spoiled. So totally spoiled. There we go. Phew. All right, intern. We did good, we've got the basics put down and now we just need to fill this whole place with plants, bring it to life. I think we should probably install a sky tram uh, very, very first actually. So we'll install a sky tram early in the morning tomorrow, fill this place with an entire rainforest, try to add in some waterfalls, and I will see you bright and early in the morning because hopefully we will be unleashing our Asian forest elephants here tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Bye bye intern.